the majority of patients with asthma have symptoms of nasal obstruction, which is impaired nasal breathing. They may have headache, they may have secretions in the nose or secretions dripping down the throat. They may have impaired smell or also sneezing salvos. Depending on the symptom presentation, we may think of this patient as having rhinitis or if there is headache or impaired smell, we tend to go more into the direction of a diagnosis of sinusitis. And if a patient is presenting with two of these symptoms for more than one hour a day, we would advocate a nasal examination that would confirm the diagnosis of either rhinitis or sinusitis. We can just look with the speculum inside the nose and evaluate the degree of mucosal disease as well as the anatomic uh, endonasal situation which will allow us to estimate what could be the reason for impaired breathing or the reason for other nasal symptoms. If we have a suspicion that there is sinus disease or to rule out other conditions, we perform a nasal endoscopy. A nasal endoscopy is a technique by which we go with a small light inside the nose and we explore the nasal uh, cavity as well as the openings of the sinus cavities and explore if there is any type of disease or inflammation that could explain the development of nasal symptoms. From our perspective or from a medical perspective, we think that it's good in the majority of asthma patients to have a checkup of the upper airways if there are symptoms present. We definitely know that allergic rhinitis is having an impact on asthma, not only on asthma symptoms, but also on the asthma severity of symptoms. There have been multiple studies on the mechanisms underlying the way by which nasal inflammation may aggravate bronchial inflammation and asthma symptoms. And actually we understand that the link between nasal and bronchial inflammation is going through the systemic circulation as well as through the neural pathway that is linking the nose and the bronchi. We know that the majority of asthma patients have rhinitis symptoms. And if these symptoms are not well taken care of by adequate medical treatment, this may lead to suboptimal asthma control. Asthma control is very important and we as ENT community are convinced that optimal care of the upper airways in patients with asthma is definitely needed to achieve good asthma control. The influence of chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps on asthma uh, cannot be underestimated. If a patient with asthma is having concomitant nasal polyps, this may lead to aggravation of asthma by more inflammation in the bronchi, as well as impaired nasal function in general. And when the nasal function is impaired, this may lead to a suboptimal condition in the lower airways because the patient cannot breathe properly through the nose and by impairment of nasal breathing, the air that reaches the lower airways is less purified, is less humidified and leads to chronic inflammation. So the contribution of nasal polyp disease to asthma should not be underestimated and therefore we are a strong advocate of adequate treatment of chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps in patients with asthma. And that treatment can be surgical or medical. And nowadays we have multiple novel treatment options for nasal polyps in asthma patients that we consider the good way for the future. We know from clinical experience as well as from multiple studies that have been performed looking at the improvement of asthma symptoms as well as the level of asthma control by proper treatment of chronic rhinosinusitis. And all these studies and clinical experiments point towards a major benefit on bronchial symptoms and bronchial control in patients with asthma. So therefore, pulmonologists and all those dealing with chronic severe asthma should evaluate not only sinonasal symptoms but also uh, collaborate with the NT doctors to have a proper checkup of the inflammatory condition in the nasal and the sinuses because that will lead to optimal control of disease in both the lower airways as well as in the upper airways.